The life of a servant of God is supposed to cause other people to glorify God. They're supposed to look at your life and see the love of God towards Christ and Christ towards the church in your life. They're supposed to look at you and see that love and see that holiness and be convicted of their own sin and see the truth of the gospel and how you live. That's how it's supposed to work. They're supposed to glorify God because of your good deeds. But the person who fills his life with sin is going to end up bringing shame to God when his sin is exposed because everybody who doesn't believe the gospel will have your sin exposed before them and will rejoice in it. People are naive enough to think that they can plant sin, water sin, and it won't grow into weeds of sin that take over their life. I mean, how many times have you heard of a person who's having an affair or something like that and gets found out because they did something really stupid? And listen, God will expose your sin. If you call yourself a believer and you cultivate secret sin in your life, the kind of sin that will ruin your life, ruin your family, ruin everything you stand for, the kind of sin that's when exposed will make you out to be a hypocrite and bring shame to God. If you cultivate that sin in your life, God will expose it. If you cover sin, God exposes your sin. That's what God does. He is the great revealer. Do you think that God will allow you to lead your sinful life and keep mocking him? Listen, we're in a war of worldviews right now. Our world embraces Christian terminology and morphs it to be against Christian doctrine. Let me give you some examples. We have the word holiness, which means living in a life in accordance with God's standards expressed in his words. The world takes the word holiness and just uses it to mean goodness. You don't have to know the Bible to be holy, just be a good person. See how that's at war with God? Christians use the word love, which by that we mean the love that God has for his son, Jesus, that Jesus has for the church, seen in his death on the cross and giving his life for others that we now show the world. That's what the word love means. The world takes it and contorts it to mean tolerance. You love me if you're tolerant of me. We have the word forgiveness, which means the death of Jesus Christ covers our sin. We've been forgiven so much that we want to be quick to forgive others of so little, relatively speaking. The world takes that word and just turns it to mean ambivalence. The battle line is clear. You're either on God's side or you're on sin's side. Choose your side. Sin may make you stupid, but God forgives sin. When you confess your sins, God forgives your sins. He is just, but he's also the justifier. He declares sinless those who have sinned when they profess faith in Jesus Christ, when they turn from their sins and surrender their life to him. I pray that you would take inventory in your own life, that you would confess your sins to the Lord. And that if you're one of those people that is harboring these life-dominating sins that is destroying your family because of your own desires of your flesh, that you would confess that, that you would let that go, that you would recognize that you're not going to get away with it, that sin will ruin your life, that you'd understand that the, the worst punishment God can give you in this life is letting you do what you want to do. You think that's getting away with it. That's God abandoning you. And instead, you repent from your sin. Turn your life to the Lord, who is quick to forgive. Have you ever been so blessed and energized by a message you just want to share it with the world? Well, you're in luck. All Sunday messages are made available every Monday morning. It is Emmanuel's vision and hope that you use these resources to share them with individuals in your network. Share some of your favorite sermons today. Find them all at ibcva.com teaching. Thank you for sharing the message of Christ.